These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons or the fox that even happened The two grown men on a mission now So buckle up and just strap in Cause this is Thriller Thriller Night And no one's gonna save you From the beast about to strike You know it's Thriller These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons It's America's Barley Basket Welcome everyone to another episode of America's Barley Basket, episode 176. I am your host, Marlon Wells, alongside host Nathan Volzelbach. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Marlon. How are you? I am I am gr- good. Look at you. Couldn't say great because I don't want to lie to the good people of the podcast. Yep, you're an honorable man that way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to get too graphic, but you know what? Our listeners, they know, oh boy. They know us. They know what's happening to the slow, uh, maybe not even slow anymore, the decline of our bodies. Remember the troublesome abdominal issues I had during the last podcast. My very first note says, check in on Nathan's bottom. Yeah. <laughs> My bottom has been on a roller coaster ride of sadness for the last, <laughs> we're going about nine days of ups and downs, twists and turns, nothing, none of them good, all leading to sadness. But I tell you what, minutes before this podcast was recorded, I took my first solid shit in 10 days. So Hooray! <laughs> so we cue in the applause. Yeah. Drop the balloons. <laughs> These balloons say hard poops. <laughs> you in a... You in a- Air Force flight suit with mission accomplished on the banner behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did it. An Air, an Air Force band playing behind me. Solid poops. Solid poops. Solid. <laughs> the wipe was just a formality, he said. <laughs> 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 healthy dumping clap 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 <laughs> yeah we gotta get a pet man for this <laughs> <laughs> hire some baton twirlers yeah someone's got a t-shirt cannon <laughs> <laughs> healthy dumps on a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> well good for you buddy i'm happy for thank you thank you I've i was been- legit happy and like, I was I'll like, bet. I went to use the bathroom as one does. I was like, wait a second. Wait a goddamn minute. What's this? What's this? You singing that fucking yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas song? There's magic in the air. What's this? <laughs> in a truck stop men's room. <laughs> Hey, keep it down in there. We're trying to have sex. <laughs> One of them's like completely honest. Like, could could you sing nice to me too? <laughs> <laughs> like an emotional support dog in the bathroom. <laughs> oh shit! Come on, Gerald. You got it in you. We believe in you. <laughs> but I'm scared. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> Everyone here's rooting for you. Hold my I hand. Hold my goddamn this. hand. Yeah. Oh. God, I don't like this. Is never what you want to hear. Come from a bathroom stall. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it have to be this way? <laughs> And I know you you weren't with, and I know you're a man that enjoys the ins and outs of gas station cuisine. Ooh, go on. I got a breakfast burrito during breakfast hours, somewhat, probably 11 a.m. Okay. So not outrageously late, if you would agree with me, I would say. Yeah, I would call, that on, I would call that on the late end of normal, but I wouldn't yeah. call it late. But not dangerous, one would hope. Oh, yeah, that ain't a vintage burrito. No, no. I got... A breakfast burrito that fucking felt and looked 
like it had been left on the top of a car and ran through a car wash. <laughs> it was like drenched, like a fucking what? towel. It's like, why is there so much water in this packaging? What it's the like, fuck? It was dripping out. <laughs> Who wants a wet breakfast burrito? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damp is not the adjective you want to describe your burritos. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't want this it long was... Mexican gusher. Man, yeah, and I don't want to besmirch the good name of Speedway, but Speedway got to have the worst hot food. I don't think I've ever been to a Speedway. Yeah, I think they're a pretty strictly Minnesota phenomenon. Okay. They're everywhere. Not quite. A, they're not quite as, you know, like, well, I don't know what the word I'm like, prolific as Holiday, but there, there's a lot of Speedways. So holiday's fucking everywhere. Yeah holiday every once in a while you'll find a holiday that's ran well and their food's at least tolerable i would call i would put holiday like in a like top three gas station chain as far as hot food goes okay yeah i would say it ain't uh, a casey's but it's it's yeah. good you get the occasional truck stop that's got their hot food situation figured out too oh yeah a true blue truck stop though is almost a different category yeah uh like a, a good petro or arco that has hot stuff you know i'm a hot stuff boy you are yes yeah <laughs> quick trip is almost so good it has to be considered something motherfucker else i was just about to bring up i had hot food from a quick trip for the first time last week when you and i and and sweet angel boy chase raider were coming back from a comedy show and we stopped at a quick trip and i'll i'll fucking preach a quick trip as far as hot food goes that was good ass gas station food yeah there's like you get there at the right time of day. There are three different soup selections. That's incredible. I had I had a just like a a wrapped up sitting under the warmer bacon cheeseburger and a fucking breakfast croissant which at 10 p.m. they got them sitting there waiting for you. And that was another one. That was for sure. That was new. That wasn't 10 that wasn't, p.m. and been there since 8 a.m. That, that wasn't making its trip around the sun. That, no, that was, they were just like, hey, sometimes people with late night food needs want breakfast. Yeah. And they're fucking correct. I ate those two sandwiches and drank a big thing of milk right in your face. And it was delightful. Yeah, we stopped at one last night. They had multiple whole rotisserie chickens for sale god damn boy can you like imagine the fucking mess you would make <laughs> trying to eat a rotisserie chicken in your car while you're driving god you almost have to just accept the third degree burns and just <laughs> shove your fist up its ass and just eat it like an ice cream cone as you drive <laughs> <laughs> i see no other way of doing it <laughs> god to pull up next to that at a red light holy guacamole <laughs> you got your shirt off because <laughs> it's so messy <laughs> oh. you know as far as eating healthy on the road that's about as good as you could do probably yeah. oh my god yeah just Every trip needs to begin with one chicken. And by the end of the weekend, that's we're fucking breaking open bones to get to the marrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Just doing a fucking chicken run, doing a doing a comedy weekend fueled by gas station rotisserie <laughs> chickens. <laughs> Whew. I just saw the news today that uh, Fargo's getting two quick trips. You're kidding me. Yep. The first one's in North Dakota, and I will be there day fucking one eating shoveling <laughs> sandwiches down my face. <laughs> you got a rainbow Afro wig, booty shorts, John 316 shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not a man you want to emulate. That dude, things didn't end super hot for Rainbow Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was when he went by was rainbow man okay yeah rainbow man like <laughs> took a revolver and held a fucking maid hostage in a hotel eventually oh, rainbow holy. man eventually went off his fucking tits <laughs> holy shit i did not know this yeah man the john 316 <laughs> guy in the rainbow wig yeah. isn't yeah. one to emulate <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're gonna do a little different you got the little shorts you got the roller skates 
<laughs> giant sunglasses and a big lolly. <laughs> God, you act like I can. You, I I don't think I could sit in roller skates, much less stand or walk. <laughs> God, I'd be a nightmare in roller skates. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> it would make for some great online content video of you learning to swim while I learn to roller skate. <laughs> Fuck me. Just no, no, no. <laughs> I don't think I could do either of those things. <laughs> we uh, we got quick trip food, by the way, if you'll remember, Nathan, on our way back from an insane comedy show. Oh, we show. Oh, I was like, which one? Which that's troubling. That <laughs> that is very troubling. <laughs> the most recent insane comedy show that I was a part of, anyway. Yeah. They rolled out the red carpet. There was a giant stage that would have made Kiss blush. <laughs> 30 yeah. by 20 foot stage. <laughs> it was a big one. <laughs> and that's where the the niceties ended. <laughs> you could have put a fucking symphony up there. Real big fish could have comfortably performed on that stage. <laughs> there could have been an end of the night ska band playoff. <laughs> <sighs> Go through all the work, put up that great big stage, but definitely don't promote that there's a comedy show that night. <laughs> Well, time for the show to begin. There were six moms at a f table, which is often a good thing for comedy, but not when they have no clue that a comedy show is about to happen. Yeah, that's a bummer. So they just ate chicken sandwiches and loudly talked over me during my set. <laughs> and those six were over half of the crowd. I counted at the <laughs> beginning. When you took the stage, there were 11 people. <laughs> there were... Two couples on tall boy tables that were blocked from my view for the most part. Yeah. Uh, there was a good natured elderly simpleton who I don't know if he knew what the jokes meant, but he smiled a lot. That was nice. <laughs> elderly simpleton is my favorite bluegrass musician. <laughs> <laughs> and beside him was a tiny elderly woman who fucking hated me <laughs> yep hated everything that was happening yeah. she was saddened and confused by all of it <laughs> our uh, mutual friend chase said that one time one of my jokes actually got some laughs and she was looking around at them dumbfounded mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, she, looked, would, yeah. she looked like the last person in body snatchers who's not a pod person like yeah. looking around in disbelief <laughs> i mean we there were some pod people in that crowd that night <laughs> Oof. and then by the when you were done and then the lovely chase raider went up there the crowd went down to four yep Oh, and we're forgetting the two delightful women that sat down who actually were great. Oh, angels laughed at fucking yeah. everything, sat right up front. What What do you say? They probably came in about five minutes into my set. Yeah, probably something like that and stayed for most of Chase's set. Chase went second. Yeah. <laughs> and then they got up. <laughs> as soon that... <laughs> as their fucking boyfriends came in and sat down, I was like, get out of here, you puds. You're going to ruin this. <laughs> these two gals are having fun. How many times <laughs> on these goddamn comedy shows have we seen <laughs> women having fun and men ruining that? <laughs> For, for these shows that we do, if you want the men to be winners, they have to be all men together. Mm -hmm. A table full of men can be a hot ticket to get laughs out of. Like, yeah. to, tonight, the show I did actually today had a table full of younger guys, and they were fucking terrific. But you get them with their girlfriends, I don't know what it is. If they think laughing is a sign of weakness, but they, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they don't want to do it. Or it's, or it's these two fucking idiots that were at this show. Two women having fun their dudes yeah. come in and drag them out of there yep and it's not like they were like in foul moods they sat down and were kind of laughing too but then yeah. yeah it's like they smiled for several minutes in a row yeah. and yeah <laughs> but that was too much yeah <laughs> and then the simpleton just wandered off i don't know what happened to him the old lady evaporated she turned a hundred and turned into dust yeah and uh 
the one table in the far back who was kind of good that was out of eye shot they left too yeah so the then we were down to the 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 husband didn't legit smile for an hour like Yep, we were down to one couple. The man hated every moment of being there. (laughs) And the woman seemed not to hate it, but just to be indifferent. (laughs) Yep. She'd occasionally laugh, just occasionally. The husband, it's like, if I went to a movie and I didn't find the first hour enjoyable... I'd go home. Well, I'd go do something else. <laughs> good news, Nathan, because after an hour of comedy, and I am on stage at this point, that's exactly what they did. <laughs> and what is a first for us? Not only were there no people in the crowd, the this was a secondary building connected to the bar. There wasn't any bar staff. There wasn't anyone we were literally the only heartbeats the three comedians in that whole big building (laughs) i was 10 minutes into a 30 minute set and i i had not gotten a smile by then they like had gotten their check and were like sorting out money that lady spent most of those 10 minutes looking in her purse for something (laughs) while the dude stared blankly at the wall behind me and (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> 10 minutes into a 30 minute set they left and i just stood there i was like i kept like looking over at you and like shrugging even while they were still there looking at you and being like what the fuck are we doing guy <laughs> when they got up and la- got up to leave christ almighty did i laugh yeah <laughs> And, like, and then it just became a workshop. <laughs> honestly, it was far and away the best thing that could have happened was for yep. them to fucking leave. Because <laughs> yeah. I just All turned pr- to you and Chase sitting right by the stage. I was like, you want to hear some new stuff I'm working on? And just <laughs> spitball, just did a fucking open mic. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure was off. There was literally no one there. Nobody was there. Yep. So why it not? It was just- such an insane relief when those two people left. I stopped mid bit. I stopped mid sentence in a bit and and was just like, well, you want to make it an open mic, I guess, guys. <laughs> I'm working on some I'm working on some spicy stuff about grocery stores. You want to guys want to hear about that? <laughs> You're calling in requests 11 minutes in. <laughs> Fuck me, what an insane yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that one was wild. And remember, too, we talked about this, how every employee there from the owner on down seemed had like sadness permeated their being. They yep. were like, everyone was like hang dog, sad, kind of talking slow. You yeah, like did need the need anything? Did you guys have like a, a plucky beagle as a mascot for this bar and it got hit by a truck today? Is yeah, that what happened? Like did the neighboring town kidnap and eat your dog? Did you guys have a mass child funeral earlier today? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the why the why the funeral potatoes were out <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable yeah. and over on the other side of that partition because it was like a, a big room split into two rooms with the bar on one side and over on that other side like people who you would assume would want to check out the show people in their yeah. late 20s that are getting drinks in them and no, they just sat over there on that side of the bar. No, yeah, and it was baffling. But also, they might not have known what was happening on the other side of the bar because there was no nothing in that bar said a word about there being a comedy show that nope. night. If you own a bar and you book a comedy show, tell someone. <laughs> <laughs> the PSA we didn't know the world needed. Unfucking believable. One yeah. Facebook post with no fanfare. Just yeah. here's an event page. That's it. <laughs> A full week before the show. Just yeah. <laughs> comedy at the such and such at eight o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. The, the show I did today at one PM when we walked in carrying the 
PA system, there was a table of people playing, I assume, whist or pinochle. And their first thing was, oh, is it bingo today? And I was like, nah, it's stand-up <laughs> Ooh, comedy. that's a bad vibe. And they were so bummed that it wasn't bingo. They were real <laughs> sad about that. You should travel with a bingo ball hopper yeah. just in case <laughs> they'd rather do that. I I got the app on my phone. I used to do bingo, so I can I can call bingo till the, till the sun comes down. Yeah, order up uh, order up a brick of cards, and yeah. we can do that as a like a parachute. Yeah. We're like, oh, those people, <laughs> these people don't want a comedy show. Hey, bingo, everybody. That's a hell of an audible to call midway through a comedy show. <laughs> Not knowing which, oh, do it midway. Yes. <laughs> if if you if you bomb three bits in a row, we play bingo. Yeah. Okay, everyone, uh, get your wallets out. <laughs> <laughs> you get three cards for five bucks. Uh, we're, every round is blackout. We're keeping in every dollar <laughs> fuck you guys <laughs> say, say it again for the people in the back i want to make sure that it didn't go right past them what time did your comedy show start today nathan 1 p.m uh-huh yeah uh, lunchtime they lunched <laughs> and i was like oh that's just must be what they do in this town they have entertainment in the afternoon get there meet the bar owners like oh do you do this a lot she's like nope first time <laughs> like, oh, this such is... an insane choice to make yeah and against all odds it was a great time which is amazing like yeah. i can't fucking believe that sometimes these bar owners get it right they know their clientele they serve these people beers every day for decades. So. <laughs> and and let me ask, just out of curiosity to see if maybe there's a coincidence happening, do you, did the bar talk about there being a show today at 1 p.m.? <laughs> yeah. Hold on to your butts. They did. Did they? Huh. Yeah. Weird. Weird that there were people at it. Huh. Yeah. Who'd have fucking thought? Yeah. They, <laughs> who would have thought indeed? Unreal. And, uh, and they, they, everyone had to pay tickets. They were happy to do so. And like we see every time, if people pay for a ticket, they'll actually give a fuck. They're invested. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to be a horse's ass during this show. I paid to be here. Yeah. Oh, everyone else paid to be here. I'll piss them off if I'm a loud asshole. Yeah. Funny how that works. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Who? Show is. I'm, yeah. a little, I, I'm a little sourpuss today, I guess. Yeah. It was just how jarring it was driving home from a comedy show and looking at the at the <laughs> clock and it's 2 55 p.m <laughs> broad fucking daylight yeah. it's like when you go to a matinee movie and you step out yeah. of the theater and you're like oh yeah. god the sun yeah. <laughs> i gotta share this with you nathan okay um i came across this earlier today uh we don't solicit reviews for this show. We should. If you like we this should. show, you should go on, you know, Apple Podcasts or whatever wherever it is you listen and leave us a leave us a nice review. It makes us feel good. Uh but I don't like on the back end here, I don't like get a notification that we get one. So usually a handful of times every year two to four times a year i'll go oh i should go see if anyone has left a review lately and so i'm reading this one from back in june and i'm gonna read this whole thing to you oh god it's more than just one sentence it's more than just a sentence uh i'm gonna preface this with i have alluded to both both privately and on this show that like I'm not always 100% sure who this is for. Like, certainly <laughs> Simpsons fans can't like this show because there's too much horse shit. And surely people that just want to listen to us go back and forth don't like it because they don't want to sit through the Simpsons. <laughs> this is just the format we stumbled upon completely organically. This wasn't what we set out to do when we started this show. But I like it, and I think that it's good. And like, I'm not, I'm never gonna fucking like. This is a yes and show. If the jokes yeah. are flowing, I'm never gonna fucking shut them off. Like, go, go nuts. Do we have we spent? Oh, I'm gonna say 
half an hour recording already but and we haven't talked about the simpsons yes <laughs> because we're having fun <laughs> so when i tell you that my heart was warmed by this five-star review from back in june let me read this to you <clears throat> Quote, I have decided to leave a review after finally catching up on this. These two do a delightful job, and the banter is well done back and forth. I'll admit there's times I've yelled at my phone on Simpsons trivia, one of which I will address below. But these two have made the past 300 or so hours quite enjoyable. <laughs> this is followed by a second paragraph, Nathan, that says, Nitpicking. The guy you keep referring to as a Pali was named Raphael in season 12, episode 13, Day of the Jack and Apes, eight minutes and 21 seconds in. <laughs> so the fact that you, angel listener who wrote this, the fact that you either love the Simpsons so much that you walk around with that knowledge in your head or care about it so much that you bothered to go look it up, but yet still like this show is very heartwarming to me. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I thought for sure you were going to mention the review we got on YouTube about a year and a half ago when it was just someone commenting, what is this? One comment. <laughs> what is this? What is this? So it's nice to get one that someone actually put some thought into. Look at and, that. And that, that YouTube comment that you're talking about uh, also is on the episode that has like almost 600 views for no reason. It's just a random uh, episode of our show that for whatever reason on YouTube has, I think last I looked like 580 views. I've The internet is an interesting place. Most of our videos get a handful, maybe a dozen, yeah. but for whatever reason, people really like episode 80. I'm not sure. And there's another one that has like 300 yeah. Why? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Are you know. Fucking with us? It's working. <laughs> is this a <laughs> work or is this a shoot? Night. <laughs> you and I spend hours dissecting those two episodes to see if that's where pay dirt is. <laughs> I wake up in a cold sweat. I've listened to those episodes 40 times a piece just to <laughs> see what the lightning in the bottle is. Forwards and backwards. Is there a <laughs> hidden message we're missing out on? But the idea, like, I love that review so much because the idea that you are such a Simpsons, Mark, that you listen for the Simpsons, but still like the horse shit is yeah. <laughs> like, I got, I had just a big fucking dumb grin on my face when I read that last night. I was like, they are out there. The people that are here for both the horse shit and the Simpsons, they are out there. <laughs> There's oh. people that like the Simpsons and random wrestling references. Yeah. And <laughs> all manner of talks about your colorectal health. <laughs> Mishaps. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your poopsie oopsies. <laughs> My bottom troubles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, so thank you for that. That really made yeah. my day. Yeah, if you're bored, go, go give us a review online. Unless yes. you don't like it, then just keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah, we should we should we should solicit for that more and we don't, but whatever. Yeah. It's fine. It's not like it's not like, oh, if we don't get any more reviews, we're gonna quit. We can't stop now. So yeah. not until the Simpsons stop. Yeah, and even then we'll probably just keep doing the horse shit. Are we gonna do this like kiss where if one of us starts slipping, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna replace them? <laughs> you wanna be the you wanna be the Eric Carr of of America's barley basket? As a do you already have my Eric Carr lined up? <laughs> <laughs> do you wanna be the Vincent Saint Vincent of America's God. barley basket? We're at your place recording and a guy that vaguely looks like me shows up. <laughs> no, Dominic, that's next Sunday. <laughs> he doesn't look like you, but I set aside clothes and a wig for him. Yeah. A pair of fake glasses. <laughs> you got him off labor ready. <laughs> He's a day laborer. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm not going to lie. I needed the laugh, Nathan. I've restarted watching Chernobyl again, and I'm happy to laugh. <laughs> what what spurred that on? I couldn't get it out of my head. I saw, I saw a clip of it on TikTok. I'm not sure why this is a thing, but people just upload clips from movies to TikTok. And somehow during my scrolling... I came across a scene from Chernobyl and I was like, oh yeah, that was really good. And I yeah. couldn't get it out of my head for like a week. So now I've restarted watching Chernobyl and I made the mistake yesterday of shotgunning three episodes in one sitting. Don't mm. do that. Too sad. Make you too <laughs> sad. I thought that was going to be shotgunning three energy drinks and then sitting <laughs> down in front of the TV. <laughs> <laughs> that show is the best thing that's ever been put on television it's amazing oh i wouldn't go that far but it's fucking good both of those two main actors are so good that first episode oh fills you with such dread it starts so hot people throw uh, the phrase coming in hot around too uh -huh. loosely nowadays that mm -hmm. show is and the guy that's kind of in charge that's just a prick yep. in that first season yep. or that first episode like and if we can't sell this show any more than we already are it isn't a huge time commitment no it's, it's like, like five i think six episodes and they're all a six? little okay. over an hour Yep. This isn't like watching fucking 31 seasons of Gunsmoke. Right. <laughs> this, <laughs> you don't have to move your life around for this show. If you want to, you can do it in a weekend. Yeah. And the, the acting, the cinematography, the story, it's uh, everything about that show is five stars. That show yeah. is so astoundingly good. Yeah, they nailed it. What year did that come out, roughly? 21? Okay. Maybe 20? Yeah. As I said, that came right not too long after you know, the world opened up from COVID is when I found out about it. Yeah. the Just that, the shots in that first episode... Those people standing on the bridge, holding babies, looking at the looking at the fire burn way over there. Yeah. Like the obliviousness of everyone involved while you, the viewer, know that the worst thing is happening right now. <laughs> so good. When, yeah. When they go to the hospital where those guys are cooking from the inside, yeah. like such an insane thing to have happen to you. And that that lead actor, that what's his name, Jared, uh, he's too good, is yeah. <laughs> is where I was going with that. He's it too makes you angry. Good. Yeah, like I'm sorry, you can't be this competent of an actor. It's not allowed. <laughs> Can you take it down a notch? You're kind yeah. of showboating. Jared Harris, that's his name. There you go. Yeah. Jared Harris and and Stellan Skarsgård, the, the other yeah. guy. Fucking yeah. yeah. a. It's, funny you're it's too good yeah. no uh, funny you brought this up too i just a couple days ago read some kind of av club or insert pop culture website here their list of like the top 50 best hbo shows and i was like well 50 is too many it's not mm -hmm. it's like, there, there's stuff in the 40s that's great and yeah like, and it just kind of reminded me of a couple things that I never got around to watching. Like they had that, tr is it pronounced Trem? Like T-R-E-M-E? -E? No idea. It, I don't know what that it's, is. It's It probably came out, fuck, I don't know, 10 years ago. It was the next project that the guy that created The Wire made. And okay. instead of being based in Baltimore, it's based in New Orleans and... Is it yeah, another were, like crime show? Or? No, see, I don't really think it is, or maybe it is, but you, the cops aren't main characters. If that hmm. makes sense, yeah. That's I, the thing with the wire. It's fifty percent from the cops' viewpoint and fifty percent from the criminals' viewpoint. Yeah, I've got to watch. I've got to watch the wire. I think. Yeah, have, have you ever seen the Sims or the Sopranos all the way through? No, I stopped watching in season probably four because i oh, was born man. i was like this is just... this is no longer fun you need to re you need to 
gather yourself, prepare yourself, go into your dojo, work your body, <laughs> and come out of that <laughs> and watch watch every episode of The Sopranos in a month. <laughs> you know when I loved The Sopranos? Like, through most of season one, when it was, like, kind of funny and, like, not taking... It wasn't such a fucking soap opera. Yeah, I'll uh, see. I, I mean, I like the, the humor in it, but I love the soap because the acting, God, like some of those like uh, James Gandolfini, Edie Franco or Falco, like their marriage dissolving. Like, it's like I can't even look at the screen. It's so like <laughs> upsetting. Like there's them screaming at each other. It's like this is what a marriage sounds like when it dissolves. Like I'll have to give it another shot because I was probably 22 the last time I tried. So yeah, that's been a long time. Full of fango, full of new metal, giant <laughs> jean shorts. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah the good times <laughs> aggressively long chain wallet <laughs> i've owned more than one chain wallet that life. was gonna be my next question like you if you had one though i'd be like you know what that fits it fits your look it fits your persona i owned a, a plain black leather one and an oz mm -hmm. and a plain black leather one with the ozzy osbourne logo on it <laughs> when, when they dusted you off and put you on the train to come to fargo and <laughs> <laughs> did you still have like did you have like a old farm giant wallet slash checkbook holder or did you have a normal wallet nope i had a normal billfold by then i was never a big checkbook guy picturing you at 145 a.m at borrowed bucks roadhouse <laughs> on college <laughs> night well let's see i drank 27 beers that comes to nine dollars <laughs> can't get my checkbook out of my back pocket because that little silver medallion with the with the turquoise in the middle and the little frills on it is stuck in my fucking jeans just yank it rip the whole ass out of your jeans <laughs> Oh no, my Wranglers! <laughs> Holy, what a thing to get hurt hauling out. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> you know, the Wrangler really betrays the fat man. They, they, their size cut off is pretty, pretty quick. <laughs> I have not looked to confirm this, but I saw something on Instagram the other day saying that Wrangler is one of the best brands to go for if you're a big honking boy. They are really? apparently they apparently are carrying some big old sizes these days. No shit. Fucking 20 years ago they didn't, but America's gotten fatter. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't change the fact that everyone else is getting rid of all their fat clothes. I was in JCPenney yesterday. You want to see something heartbreaking? Go watch the dwindling big and tall section at JCPenney's. J.C. Penney's Big and Tall used to be a light in the darkness for fat men looking for clothes. <laughs> yeah, it used to be twice the size of the biggest Taco Bell you've ever seen. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you could fit all of the Big and Tall clothes into the smallest Taco Bell you've ever seen. <laughs> we got to quit using Taco Bells as measurements. That's what got us into this problem. <laughs> Marlon, I've been meaning to talk to you about using Taco Bell as a unit of measurement. <laughs> <laughs> fair point well taken how big was that snake marlin the length of seven and a half spicy chalupas <laughs> drenched in diablo sauce <laughs> marlin can you can you use feet or something can you use inches i mean you can eat with your feet but it'd be very messy <laughs> okay we're just gonna go we don't actually care about the snake anymore <laughs> I could eat with my hands and my feet. I could make it work. Okay, yeah, you should do that. We're going to go. Uh, bye. If you see the snake, call somebody else because we're not, we don't care. Call any, any other number. Driving away. <laughs> But yeah, J.C. Penney's really letting us down. <laughs> <laughs> J.C. Penney, much like ourselves, are letting themselves go. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. What did we do to the good people at J.C. Penney besides give us give them our dollars? 
Yeah, it beats me. You know how much money I was giving JC Penny before I discovered they had a big guitar section? Zero. You know how much have I given them <laughs> since? A bunch, a whole bunch, <laughs> whole bunches. <laughs> God, yeah, it was the one of the few places you could find fat guy clothes on sale. And what they do stock, at least as of yesterday, what they do stock is so baffling. Like, <laughs> it is flannel <laughs> shirts, dress pants, uh, like four different colors of Levi bomber jacket. Like fake, <laughs> fake pleather with fake wool trim around the collar. And then all of this workout clothes, we don't work out. Stop dedicating <laughs> 70% of your fat people section to fitness gear. <laughs> what are we talking with fitness gear? Uh, sweatshirts, sweatpants, basketball mm. shorts, Adidas oh, okay. t-shirts, uh, okay. you know, that kind of thing. A lot of track suits. <laughs> there's a whole fat community that really embraces the tracksuit yeah they're called italians <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a cultural decision they have made yeah i like it's so much fucking workout gear i'm in the market for a new winter coat where where oh where <laughs> nathan should i go shop for a winter coat Oh, I would say like a farm implement, like a like a fleet farm type place. Okay, a, yeah. You, f I have two retorts. One, yeah. <laughs> you and I are gonna shop for different winter coats. That's true. <laughs> like I'm looking for like a a thick wool black big buttoned like pea coat, like. I, you know, something, something that you would see the penguin wear when he's like being out in public. Uh, secondly, I was at Fleet Farm. You and I can't shop at Fleet Farm. No shit. No, I, 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 I spent, I'm going to say 40 minutes in a fitting room at Fleet Farm yesterday <laughs> trying to trying get to... into a pair of bib overalls that were screaming no like <laughs> bib overalls that did everything but pepper spray me <laughs> trying to bend them to your will <laughs> i i got them zipped up but i was a fucking tight sausage <laughs> could i bend no could i breathe no i felt like i was wearing a whalebone corset <laughs> to say never looked better <laughs> <laughs> I, ironically enough i looked like danny devigo's penguin when he's just wearing that gray skin suit when he's in the fucking <laughs> lair <laughs> we're in that one piece union suit <laughs> yeah and then i attempted to put a carhartt coat on over the bib overalls because i'm i'm i was shopping for fucking snow blowing gear because i was like oh wait you bought a house because you're an idiot and you bought it in fargo <laughs> because you're a fucking huge idiot and now you're gonna have to snow blow you can't do it in your basketball shorts <laughs> so i was out shopping for winter gear i stopped at three different places and went over three no kidding god i bought my winter coat at a some type of outdoor dad type place <laughs> like <laughs> the average age of the customers is 67 but I wish I could help you. I wish I could remember where I got it because it's. It, I'm. Uh, I think we. I'm on record as being a Polar King man. You I are, got no yeah. beef with Carhartt, but Polar King, they've never done it. They've never done my family wrong. So we're we're staunch Polar King supporters here. I don't know who deals Polar King in town, or I'd have looked for him. But I. Uh... Yeah. They have really gotten their shit pushed in by Carhartt. Because <laughs> <laughs> I even thought like, oh, I know Nathan's a Polar King guy. Maybe I'll keep my eye out for that. I went to three different places yesterday and didn't see didn't see the Polar King logo once. Ugh, that's disappointing. 
We can't talk about big boy clothes heartbreaks all day, Nathan. Can't there's do that. More, there's more to life than tight bib overalls. <laughs> <laughs> boy howdy is there <laughs> holy shit you're putting them on no shirt the <laughs> muffin top action that must be going on <laughs> beyond muffin top it's a it's a full we've gone full pop over <laughs> we've delved into sheet cake territory <laughs> <laughs> oh god damn it just heartbreak i was in that fitting room breaking a fucking sweat just like oh. all you hear from the changing do my titties go all the way to my back <laughs> <laughs> oof too close too close to home it's just, just all titties <laughs> jesus catch yourself in the mirror i look like zoidberg when he takes his shell off <laughs> fuck me <laughs> oops all titties i usually think titties are cool but these are bumming me out <laughs> oh man just, i don't like titties when they're on my back <laughs> you can just tattoo some nips on here like they do with breast cancer survivors <laughs> just covered in diy titties <laughs> what a what a thing to ask your tattoo artist for <laughs> <laughs> just cover me in nips <laughs> <laughs> yeesh <laughs> pardon me <laughs> uh, you're getting charged extra for the all nip order yeah <laughs> <laughs> sir i would rather tattoo a swastika on you are you sure you don't want that instead <laughs> Ooh, uh, let's talk about the simpsons nathan Let's do it. Uh, I want to point out the serendipity that is happening right now. Okay. The two episodes we're talking about are the standalone Halloween special and the Treehouse of Horror. And this episode is coming out on Halloween. <laughs> wow. That <laughs> That is... An- and savor these special moments, listeners. They don't come around too often. And this is the year we decided, this is the season we decided to only do two episodes and not five. Huh. So, like, the amount of things that <laughs> fell just right to make this moment happen, you know, tell me there's no God. Tell me. Yeah, just drive to the casino. Put all your money in. Tonight's <laughs> something special is going to happen tonight. <laughs> Episode number five is Not It, which is a fantastic title. I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have thoughts on the It remakes or the original movie with Tim Curry or the book? Do you have any thoughts on It? Loved the first movie of the first remake. Liked the second one. I have an affinity for the 90s made-for-TV movie with Tim Curry as the clown. Uh, scared the shit out of me as like a 9 or 10-year-old. But I don't know if you've went back and rewatched it. I certainly don't think it holds up that well. I didn't see the Tim Curry one until I was deep into my 20s. So it was like, mm. it was schlock by then. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. too dated by then. Um, outside of Tim Curry, you can enjoy Tim Curry's performance all you want, but mm-hmm. like effects wise and scares wise, no. And it's a made for TV movie, so they can't get away with a whole lot, especially in 1990 or whenever it came out. Yeah. But I really like the, the two part remake mm-hmm. with Bill Hader and that Skarsgård boy. And yeah. what second time the Skarsgård family's come up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I like the book. I read the book very young, and the book terrified me a bunch. I've never read it. I've heard it's one of his best. It's very good. Uh, so we start the episode 27 years ago. Young Barney chasing the boat down the gutter. <laughs> At one point, he shouts, this is fun for me, which is very funny. <laughs> uh Comes up, the boat goes in the drain. He goes up to it, just like the movie. There's the face of the clown. It's Krusty, which is so good. Crusto is his name. It's funny that it's taken us this long for a Krusty is Pennywise episode. Yeah, I'm surprised this, I'm surprised we didn't do it in a short 
at this point. Yep, exactly, yeah. Like as part of the treehouse. Yeah. Uh, but whatever the case, I'm glad we left it for this great big... I really like that they did a standalone Halloween episode. Totally, yeah. And I like the little touch that on the title card, it's presented as uh, Treehouse of Horror presents not it oh no shit i i didn't even catch that like i think that's a cool way to to do it yeah uh so uh crusto the clown eats barney it does the the unhinged jaw with several rows of teeth like it does in the new movies i like that look we get uh young homer uh so homer's riding around he's got uh uh an armful of missing child flyers for his friend barney i love the little touches where we see because this is happening in Maine, this is happening in Derry, or they call it something different. Uh, is it Kingfield? Kingfield, which is funny. Yeah. It's Stephen King, but Springfield. I get yeah. it. Derry's the name of the town in the actual story. Uh, we drive past the power plant, but it's the chowder plant, and we yeah. drive past <laughs> Lard Lad Donuts, but it's Lobster Lad Lobster Rolls. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, there's a couple more. Yeah. I- I uh, can't think of what they are, but yeah, that was a lot of nice little detail touches in this one. Yeah, little makeovers to Springfield. Uh, a whole fence filled with missing kid flyers. Uh, <laughs> Homer, go- I-, I love the the indifference of the adults. There's two adults there talking. and One's like, how are the kids? Oh, you know, still missing. And they yeah. have a laugh. <laughs> Uh, homer's crossing a bridge and he gets jumped by a teenage uh superintendent chalmers but he shouts super intense kid chalmers yeah (laughs) which is very funny (laughs) and his flunkies were skinner and then the effeminate music teacher yeah it's very good uh they're they're gonna skinner's gonna or i'm sorry chalmers is gonna like carve his initials in homer which happens in the book by the way i don't remember if that happens in the movies uh but homer sees uh crusto the clown and freaks out he goes tumbling down a hill the these bullies chase him and down at the bottom of the hill is where he meets mo and comic book guy and carl and marge and they save homer uh he's a little banged up they take him back to the clubhouse and uh comic book guy has dibs on marge informs homer (laughs) that he has dibs not how it works yeah (laughs) it was a different time (laughs) uh all of the kids admit that they have also seen crusto the clown uh marge gets uh she sees him when she like drowns in seltzer in her bathroom while she's waxing her mustache yeah <laughs> um mo is attacked by a crusto the clown these are all flashbacks mo's attacked by a crusto the clown ventriloquist dummy uh carl sees him as an alien and then comic book guy's like oh yeah he came to me too as the reanimated corpse of my dead grandma in a bathtub full of maggots and mo hops in like ah, okay 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 we don't yeah. <laughs> we don't need any more flashbacks yeah that was a nice touch <laughs> i like that uh they go to the library looking for answers homer writes marge a secret love note a from your secret admirer he writes a dumb little poem and uh sticks it in her backpack uh they find out that the clown has always been here and uh never funny he was at a he had like a (laughs) he had a radio show and then a vaudeville act and then a tv show uh I think it happens in the movie also where he's on the TV screen paused and then crawls out of it. Yeah. I'm just going to say that's definitely take it from one of the remake movies. Uh, so he climbs out of the TV and attacks the kids. Uh, Homer stabs him in his neck waddle and then Marge <laughs> unplugs the television. And so they're like, okay, we can, we can defeat him. If we can hurt him, we can kill him. And Mo has this fucking mental breakdown where he's like, I don't want to get, I don't want to get put in one of those little kid coffins. They're the same price as a regular size coffin. I overheard my parents pricing them. So good. Uh, that was the, the quote I had written down. Holy moly. To be a child and overhear your parents 
shopping for kid coffins. I love super bleak Mo. Holy shit. That's outstanding. I liked yeah. that a lot. Uh, we see comic book guy find the uh the love note and be like well i gotta do something about this that comes to light later on they go down to the old tv studio i assume where crusto's show used to be um and they try to kill him none of their weapons do any good but then he like does a huge clown pratfall where he like slips on some stuff and falls in a cannon and gets launched into a different cannon and then like slips on marbles or something and they laugh and that's the first time he's ever gotten laughs so he keeps <laughs> like hurting himself for laughter until he defeats himself yeah <laughs> real sideshow bob that way like there's been times they've defeated sideshow bob by like playing into his ego yeah yeah he wants to perform let him perform yeah. <laughs> uh so they go to the swimming hole uh the quarry swimming hole and uh, and pledge that when he comes back in 20 in 27 years we'll all uh we'll all come back and uh, comic book guy, uh, in the meantime, had taken credit for Homer's love poem and just signed it. Like, he didn't change anything, <laughs> didn't put it in his own handwriting. I'm just going to say. <laughs> just signed it. It's different colored ink. <laughs> yeah. But it worked. Yeah. Did it ever. Uh, so they're all making out and Homer's sad. And then it flashes forward 27 years later to Not It Part 2. And we immediately see the delinquents get murdered. Yeah. <laughs> because Crusto is back. We go to Doe's Tavern, where Homer <laughs> is essentially Mo in this yeah. world. Mo, in the meantime, is a super famous heavy metal ventriloquist. Yeah. <laughs> it's just him on stage with a huge fucking all these animatronics and pyro and he has like an axel rose ventriloquist dummy singing rock you like a hurricane uh carl has grown up to be an astronaut and marge is the ceo of a seltzer company <laughs> Uh, and married to comic book guy and has Bart and Lisa. Uh, they're not named Bart and Lisa. I forget yeah. what their names are. And they're switched. So Bart is the straight laced music nerd and Lisa's the skateboarding punk kid. Yeah. Lisa's got yeah, their hair is different. Bart has nice Bart hair, like parted and combed. Yeah. And Lisa's is all even more spiked out than usual. Her, her spikes are longer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, married to comic book guy marge is uh she, she you know they all get the word of hey we got to go back uh comic book guy not into that at all yeah. but <laughs> then he sees the clown in a dream everyone else has gone back to kingfield and then he does too upon finding uh a note from marge uh homer finds out because they're they're back at doe's tavern with uh it's homer carl mo and marge uh homer finds out about the poem that the comic book guy took credit for almost 30 years ago <laughs> and is gonna bring it up but gets interrupted when comic book guy and the kids show up uh they uh shuffle the kids out of does uh so that marge can yell at comic book guy and the kids walk there they get tied up uh or they get captured because they stop to watch a tv at the needful things store yeah, <laughs> yeah everything that they run into was was stephen king themed yeah everything is stephen king in this world uh I've been to Maine. There's not nearly as much Stephen King as you would want there to be. Yeah. I thought he would what I thought he would just greet you at the border <laughs> when you crossed. There's like a big animatronic Stephen King sign waving. Yeah, like the Vegas cowboy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no no such luck. I wonder what town claims him. Oh, I you don't know. know. I think he maybe went to is Banger, the college town, because I think he went to school in Maine. Um, I feel like 
banger might be his his town i think i think where he lives now you could look up fairly easily because i saw him uh tweet a few days ago that that uh main mass shooting took place like 10 minutes from where he lives so oh no shit okay yeah i think uh i think you could find where he is now anyway fairly easily on the subject of that shooting it's wild that that what are we i look at my watch that doesn't exist what are (laughs) we four days since it happened they haven't caught that dude yet oh is he still not caught he hasn't been caught man he's just out on these streets chilling just living yeah and that's something yeah eating gas station food right next to you You don't I wonder if this know. would be, <laughs> well, that might be worse than jail. So that might be, <laughs> he, he might be getting what he deserves. <laughs> eating, a, eating a breakfast burrito at 3 p.m. Looks too wet. <laughs> yeah, I know, brother. I had one too. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, like that has to be almost unprecedented for a mass shooter to get away, you know? Yeah, no (laughs) shit. Usually Uh, they don't plan that with an escape, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's usually not a getaway plan. Yeah. Um You'll be happy to know uh, that yes, he 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 was eating gas station food right along everybody el- alongside everybody else for a good long while there. But as of eight hours ago, is dead. Oh really? Okay, yeah. Good. good. Look at that. Rest easy, people of Maine. I thought you were gonna say that to him. Like, what are you yeah. <laughs> doing? <laughs> Rest in power, King. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Marlon and Post, I want you to play uh, Bone Thugs Crossroads in this part. <laughs> Sitting there, hey, everybody. <laughs> in loving memory. I don't know one fucking word to that song. Yeah, you nailed it, though. You, <laughs> I was, I was going to try, but I got bashful. You just got... <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta make some fucking beat bop boop noises and call yeah. it good yeah <laughs> that's pretty much what it would have been yeah at the crossroads you gotta just <laughs> you just gotta like kill time you just gotta yeah. you just gotta skank beatbox yeah. up until <laughs> me at the crossroads they're just making modem sounds (laughs) (laughs) somebody tried to call the fax line (laughs) oh shit (laughs) <laughs> so the kids get nabbed by crusto he takes them to the tv studio uh and lures the parents there to come get them or not the parents but all of the you know the adults and yeah. i love the 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 little writing twist of like yes he he can't feed off your fears anymore because you're not children but since you're adults he feeds off your anxiety <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's like there's all these little uh representations like a past due bill or a maga hat uh yeah. uncle at thanksgiving <laughs> i like that a lot uh and he has a uh, a studio audience full of the souls of all the children he's murdered <laughs> with a big like applause sign that's that's making there's, him grow stronger there's a whole bunch of them they, he's been doing work that's yeah. way too many dead kids been a busy boy a lot of dead yeah. kids <laughs> how many is too many yeah. <laughs> i don't want to go on record <laughs> okay smart you don't want to put a number on it yeah. 11 11 jeez <laughs> we both pick 11 (laughs) wait is 11 the right number i don't know (laughs) it felt right i don't like it it felt right at the time but now i don't like it (laughs) america's barley basket is totally cool with you killing 10 children (laughs) 
<laughs> that's not that's nothing to nothing to write home about. You got oh god, eleven or more to get their attention. <laughs> that was like the worst version of the like stereotypical first date thing in a rom com yeah. of like, what's your yeah. favorite song? We'll say it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! How many dead kids is too many dead kids? <laughs> eleven. Ah. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> Hard to say what it is. That's like the song that kicks in in the rom com. <laughs> Holy moly. Uh uh Krusty or Crusto, sorry, uh reveals uh he like is talking directly to comic book guy like you got a fucking real anxiety i can fucking spill the beans about that goddamn love poem and marge like kind of <laughs> overhears it like what what the fuck and uh I oh it's one of the kids hollers down at marge like take out the applause sign so the souls can't laugh and give him his power and marge was a softball player is that mm -hmm. how that she's right. introduced um yeah so she's the only one that can do it and she winds up and crusto comes at her but comic book guy fucking takes one jumps in front of the teeth takes one for marge and she destroys the applause sign and all of the kid spirits go away and he, uh crusto loses all his power and that's it he uh like shriv shrivels up and just blinks out of existence yeah um marge is with homer now they're like doing their ride off into the sunset shit uh and we cut to kang and kodos who are like those those kids destroyed our thousand year old clown what are we gonna do now <laughs> uh and they go over to a bookshelf that is just full of stephen king novels and start like pulling them off the shelves like what about a i don't know a dog that has rabies no that doesn't you know what about a shop that deals in souls and then they settle on what about the tommy knockers that sounds yeah. scary <laughs> Tommy Knockers one of the few Stephen King entities I know nothing of. Tommy Knockers the first Stephen King book I ever read. Interesting. In my youth, I remember finding it at our library and taking it home and really enjoying it. Um Is it Is that the one that's like a collab with Peter Straub? No, I don't think so. I think that's Is it The Black House and the Talisman? Are those oh, the, the two talisman. Peter Strauss? Yep. yep, you nailed it. Yep. Uh, Tommy Knockers is is very much uh, uh, body snatchers. Very much replace people with pod people. Oh, okay. From what I remember, I read that book when I was like fucking ten. So, but that's what I remember of it anyway. And that's that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Yep. I like the source material, so I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, I think I was uh I think I was predetermined to like it before I even watched it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good I'm a mark for this going in. Yeah. I was already on board. Uh, <laughs> and we get to keep the super spooky double feature rolling with episode six, Treehouse of Terror 33. Ah, buddy. Did I not get it? God, there was some <laughs> trepidation in my voice. Yeah, you were shaky. Shot. I could feel yeah. you hesitate. You weren't confident. I wasn't ready for the high dive. I like the low dive. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Uh, Treehouse of Horror 33. Nailed it. To be fair, you're very out of practice. It's been a yeah. long time. <laughs> it's, been, it's been several months. Yeah. Okay, so we got Treehouse. You know the deal by now. You've been with us this long. We're going to get three shorts. You know, I shouldn't say that. Didn't we have one with four shorts yep, towards the end? there was a four one once. Yeah. But this one, we're back to three. Uh, the very first one is the Puka Duke, which is a play on the Babadook. You, you, I'm sure you figured that out if you know what the Babadook is. You ever see the Babadook? Yep, I did. I never have, but I know people really like it. Yeah, it's 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 an above average horror movie. It won't change your life, but it's good. It's it's pretty damn scary. Cool. Uh, kind of a, just a, a twist on the boogeyman. 
Yeah, that's what I understood. Isn't it like the Australian version of the boogeyman or something? Oh, you're yeah, you're right. It is a thing of folklore. Like it, it wasn't written just for that movie. Yeah, yeah they didn't invent the Babadook. So uh, Marge brings Maggie to her room with the idea of reading her a bedtime story. She ends up picking the goddamn Pookadook, which is a terrifying looking book. It made, it out of, made yeah. itself be picked, though. It was like yeah. every. Oh, other, you're right. As she was <laughs> yeah. going through the titles like every other book was the Pookadook. And she's yeah. like, Wait, how many of these do we have? And she, But when she steps back, there's only one of them. Yeah. Magic book. Spooky. Yeah. Yeah. One thing with these these treehouse, they got to get into it quick. They don't yeah. got time to pussyfoot around. <laughs> and, well, goddammit, Maggie needs a story. So Marge reads the Pookadook, and now bad things are happening. Uh, Maggie wakes up crying. She's drawing really scary pictures with, like, people's faces blacked out. Terrifying. And, if I had a child, just, if I had oh. a child and they were blacking out the, the people's faces in all yeah. of their drawings, I had a friend when her son was real young, like under five, like maybe four, like, like once found all of their photos her and her husband's faces had been like scratched out of every photo in the house. Oh boy. <laughs> they kept that kid. You got to oh, throw that kid boy. away. <laughs> yeah. You let that kid go over the woods. He's got to be one of the 11. <laughs> She, yeah, <laughs> and she like put it on Facebook. Like, Can you believe what this wackadoo and everybody's like, run! You gotta yeah, go. Right? <laughs> what are you doing? Look at, did you see what this little stinker did? <laughs> no, this isn't a little. The devil's in your boy. Yeah. You gotta. <laughs> and he's a twin. That's already creepy. Oh, you gotta. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Like maybe the yeah. other one is all light, but this one is all yeah. dark. You, you had need... a Cain and Abel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh-oh he's canaan again yeah. Yeah. abel talk some sense into your brother <laughs> you need you a young priest and an old priest yeah. yowza <laughs> the young one gets the old one to rap it's a real fun heartwarming <laughs> moment <laughs> rap and exorcism <laughs> 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 So Marge knows that this book is trouble. She takes it out to burn it and she ends up getting possessed by the book. Like the spirit is in a smoke form and it fills her up. And now she immediately wants to kill Maggie. Uh, She's just about to do that when the rest of the family appears. That's a common thing in these uh, tree houses where like the rest of the family that's not part of that story makes a quick appearance. Yep. Just a quick check in and... Uh this check-in was fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's got a cleaver and is is bearing down on Maggie. Homer and Bart come barging in, and Homer's like, Marge, we're building a dojo. And <laughs> takes the cleaver from her and goes, ooh, that'll be perfect to chop up the yard furniture <laughs> and they go just marching the- out just no, no they got a project <laughs> <laughs> so i don't even need to see it the idea of yep. bart and homer it's, chopping up lawn furniture it's better that we don't yep, yep. <laughs> to make a dojo is so funny and how happy they are yeah <laughs> So uh, Maggie thinks she's safe, but almost immediately the the rest of the family announces that they have like an overnight trip planned. Oh, the Marge like threatens Maggie with like, oh, the rest of the family, and she kind of talks sort of storybookish now that this mm-hmm. yeah. now that the book demon is in her. She yeah. says something along the lines <laughs> of, uh, "Family's not going to get in the way. They're going to sleep with the fishes." hard cut to homer being like a sleepover at the aquarium that's such a good idea (laughs) fuck me this is this is a good short i like this yeah very much so 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 now there is no one to save maggie and uh she goes and hides in the basement but marge soon finds her maggie's able to subdue marge for a while and she begins looking through a photo album to find pictures that will help the the, i think the plan is to kind of like 
hey, Marge, I know you're in there. Remember how much you love your family. Please don't kill me. Yeah. But all of the pictures <laughs> are of the family having fun and Marge being stuck to deal with the repercussions of how they act. So ridiculous. Like, like them all smiling, her cleaning up a mess type yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. Such yeah. a bummer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marge eventually is able to free herself, so it doesn't look very good for Maggie. But just before Marge is about to cheese her, she reaches out and touches Marge's cheek, Maggie does, which causes her to cough up the Pukadu because she she loves her Maggie. Yeah. Uh, they embrace, but now the Pukadu smoke monster is about to attack them. But Marge just ends up sucking it up with a shop vac. She had made a comment about how that was such a shitty Christmas gift. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> shop vac is a pretty <laughs> shitty Christmas gift for the mom of the house. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, what a gift to get your mom. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I think she calls it like a wet dry vac or something like that. Whoever needs to vacuum up anything wet. <laughs> yeah. Which that's not true. If you own a home, you should own a shop vac. I'll put it on the fucking list, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Something backs up. You want to be able to suck up the water out of the, oh, out of man. the carpet. The yeah. something might back up is like the most it's the loudest most echoing thing that's been in my head for two straight months now what is my sub pump doing right now no idea it's probably it failing happy? yeah <laughs> oh you'll know in the spring spring is the time to think about your sump pump oh good okay i'll yeah. just put all this to bed yeah. until the flood <laughs> Just stack your collectibles on top of that on top of that hole. You ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> my figurines. Oh, oh, my fine art. Just put it right above my sump pump pit. <laughs> Short number two is called Death Tome, and it is a wild departure from what we usually get. Uh, it is completely done in anime style. Fuck yeah. We find out right away that it stars Lisa. And this is based off of what? Death Note? Death Note, yeah. Have you and, uh, have you seen Death Note? I assume not. No, I knew nothing of it. I knew that it was big. Yeah. That like it was super popular. I've heard if I've heard the name of an anime, it's fucking popular. You wanna, you, I think that we should get you deep deep into anime yeah oh boy you want to start a second podcast we'll we'll get nathan's anime talk yeah finally do the one thing that'll get my dad to stop returning my phone calls (laughs) oh please if he has it by now yeah he doesn't know how this movie to the end (laughs) well it'll be so good we'll call it nathan anime we'll get you little cat ears yeah <laughs> we'll get you a we'll get you a me, waifu body pillow. Yeah. Me hopping around like a rabbit saying, notice me, senpai. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. Well, yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> Holy fuck. Me hopping up your the stairs to your bedroom, <laughs> just the loud thuds. Boom, boom. And me whispering like a little anime girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's nightmare fuel. Yes, it is. Oh, man. We can teach you how to Naruto run. Yeah. We, can, oh. we can. We You and I, you and I will watch and recap every episode episode of one piece there's like there's like 1250 episodes of that show and it's not done yet like let's go deep oh man you and i naruto running in your backyard how many of your neighbors will be uploading that immediately (laughs) all of them both sides and behind all three neighbors (laughs) oh man i Yes, I think we should. I think we should get Nathan into anime. Let's start. Where do you want to start? I think Cowboy Bebop's a good entry point. Yeah. I mean, I've seen all of that. See, you're already you're already yeah. on board. I've seen that. I watched that. Uh, the one where the like 100 foot tall people show up and like attack the world. Attack on Titan. There you go. I've seen most of that. But yeah. That's about where this story ends. It's just those two. We can get you into Bleach and Samurai Champloo 
and uh, <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball Z. Let's get you into DBZ. Oh, I used to always watch. I, I watched. I had a roommate that was into that stuff, and I was just like, that one. I was like, what are we doing? This is. I just can't get behind this one. Higher. Oh, I got into. Uh, oh my God, Trigun, or what was that one called? Oh, Trigun, sure. Yeah, I watched that one. Too. I've never seen Trigun. You're ahead of me on there. Look at me here being ahead. I'm ahead. That shit's twenty odd years old. But <laughs> they even they even make wrestling animes. Nathan, we can get you into that. Oh, look! At, there's so many options. Or the we gift can, that keeps on giving. We can get you. It doesn't have to be all like robots and Superman punches. It can be. We can get you into like slice of life animes, yeah, like, like uh, teen, teen drama animes. Yeah, like uh, Polar Bear Cafe. Just about this yeah. nice girl who runs a cafe. Like, Aww. let's do it. Hello Kitty. Yeah. Like, oh man, that's me again, dressed up like Hello Kitty, <laughs> hopping around your house at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that i'm like yeah we should actually you know it'd be fun for you to experience some animes and then you immediately take it too far immediately yeah. you're cosplaying yeah <laughs> it's always scampering around your house like he doesn't have a key <laughs> <laughs> how does he keep getting in <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> you go outside there's like a little air vent 25 feet in the air that's open like there's no goddamn way <laughs> it's only like 18 inches square <laughs> that can't be it yeah you go up in your attic with a flashlight and a pocket knife <laughs> <laughs> you stay away. <laughs> you get out of here, Nathan. <laughs> Tee <Tee-hee. laughs> Always right from behind you. <laughs> You're too big to scamper. <laughs> Arigato and Joe running away. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit uh, i would say that death note is good i don't know that i would call it great i would give death note okay. like a three and a half out of five maybe a four on its best day okay how old is it oh late 90s oh no shit that old huh mid 90s i gotta look now okay. to be sure i don't off the top of my head i guess i don't quite know but i mean it sure looks fucking new metal yeah that yeah <laughs> Well, Death Tome begins, uh, Lisa finds a book called A Death Tome, which says you can kill anyone by writing their name in the book. And you can't, you can, and you can't kill anyone the same way twice. You got to write down how you're going to kill them, which this is a good fucking premise. I'll give it that. I, this that could, is Death Note, write the name in the book and how they die yeah. and they die that way. Okay. Um, yeah. It's a great fucking premise. Um, it looks like the fucking mid aughts is when this thing was on. Oh, okay, okay. Like well, seven. That's okay. oh, that's that's catching the you're catching the very end of new metal. Now new metal's pretty much done by that yeah, point. Yeah, pretty dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to see Static X playing at a state fair somewhere. <laughs> County fair. Fuck state fair. They wish. <laughs> 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 so lisa's got this death tome uh she's skeptical but she keeps the book lisa likes books <laughs> i like uh, that detail why does she keep it because she likes books <laughs> later that night she sees on the news that spike has taken a popular uh is it an internet like hamster or what what does cat. she have what does cat tofu like the a cat. cat yeah like a cat that does cute shit is popular online yeah snake Spike. has kidnapped a popular yeah. internet snake. cat yeah. named tofu <laughs> a good name for a silly cat good cat name <laughs> yeah uh so lisa writes snake's name in the book and god damn it if snake doesn't die almost instantly uh, that night she is visited by a Shinigami, I believe it's some kind of demon, ugly looking fucking thing. Yep. And it's, it's name Steve Johnson, which so was a nice good. touch. It's like, and she's like, well, I thought it'd be something, you know, really scary or wild. It's like, well, you know, 300 years ago, Steve Johnson wasn't as common of a name as it is it now. It was exotic. <laughs> he calls it. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm kind of, I'm surprised they didn't make the Shinigami thing a Springfield person. I thought the same thing. Like, why isn't yeah. this... Mo or Mo would be a yeah. great option or principal yeah. Skinner or like it's just a like it's it's not somebody it's not a Springfield resident yeah it's just a thing yeah, yeah I thought that was a strange choice and Steve Johnson tells her that now that she has used the death tome that he will accompany her all the time but no one else can see or hear him uh she then kills Burns after he... God, we don't get much Burns yet. Not enough. Yeah. His new company, they've decided that they're going to melt the polar ice caps because why wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. That is very on brand for Burns. Also, I like uh, the look of anime Burns. Yeah. And yeah, anime that was a nice Homer. touch. I like anime yeah. Homer also. <laughs> Uh, and I thought this was a fun touch. Steve Johnson points out that, you know, you can kill Burns when you have killed Burns, but Burns's company, I think it's called Global Warm, mm-hmm. has endless uh, uh, employees that are just going to follow his instructions and do and melt the polar ice caps anyhow. So now Lisa is a mass murderer, (laughs) (laughs) writing um, countless names in that book. And so many, she's struggling to find out different ways to kill them. Yeah. And now, and and, and she's assumed, oh man, this is like, I can kind of play God because I can't get in trouble. But one day she's walking down the street and a news story announces that they believe all the deaths are from uh, some shadowy person, uh... Let's see. And the detective that broke the story, they don't know much about, but I think his name is L, like a capital L. And somehow that guy knows or gal knows that whoever's doing this is using a magic book. Uh, Lisa now vows to kill L because Lisa's a fucking killer now. She <laughs> has no problem killing people. Uh, and she finds out that the L is for fucking L Barto. <laughs> Which very nice touch so bringing ridiculous. back El Barto. I think I think L the letter L is the the moniker that the detective goes by in Death Note. Ah, a okay. lot of this is pretty one to one. Yeah, actually. And she is about to write uh, Bart's name in the book. But instead, she writes Steve Johnson's, which is a nice touch. He's crushed and killed by space junk, so which is a nice, such a good way to die. Uh, but like all of these, they have a Twilight Zone twist at the end. And uh, now Lisa morphs into like a Shinigami demon. So she's big, ugly looking flying thing. Yeah. And what is Bart? Bart tries to spin it in like a, hey, do, you know. At least now you can do this or something. I can't remember what that is. Like it's some terror- like girl in her class. Like well, yeah, you can like, kill Jacqueline or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. You terrorize the girl that's mean to you in school, and her being like, "No, I'm not going to do that." And then there's like a beat. And- well, maybe, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. Why? Why have a conscience now? You know. I love the quick flashes we get during the montage of her killing all the global warm board of directors. Cause like most of the, it's very, it's very fast, but a couple of the deaths are so bonkers. One is an alligator leaps out of the toilet and murders yeah. this person. <laughs> and then just a, just a half a minute later on, there's one, it's the same bathroom. A lion leaps out of there and murders a person. Ah. <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> oh fuck that's so funny <laughs> and the final of the three uh, treehouse of horror episodes or shorts is simpsons world took me a second to figure out where we were going with this one uh, yes because we don't get that title right away so yeah. i was like oh what are we doing here because it starts off it is the monorail episode from from like season five yeah I was like, what is happening? It took me a while. I was like, what is going on? And then, like, two frat bros show up and are, like, in the episode. And they start, like, feeding Homer a bunch of beer. And he, like, starts, like, f- t- like freaking out. Like, yeah. has, like, a, a glitch, I guess would be the right word. 
And that's when we find out that all of what we've witnessed so far is just part of an attraction called Simpsons World. Which I thought was like, a great start. Great, great yeah. late title card. Yeah, like, yeah which is, is very good. By now, we all know we'll play off Westworld. Did you watch that? No. I, all I remember about it is it's, it was one of those ones where people were like, holy shit, this first ep- first season is the best television ever made. And the next season was like, this is unwatchable. And it got canceled. I watched the first season and really liked it and didn't get it. I was like, I was just an idiot <laughs> enjoying the colors. Like, yeah. ooh, Ooh, Ed Harris is here. Look at Ed Harris go. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Look at Anthony Hopkins. Yay. <laughs> just a, just a, a pleasured idiot just watching the shiny show. and Colors. And I watched that whole first season and was like, I really like that and couldn't tell you what it's about. And then I also heard that, oh, season two is fucking terrible. Yeah. And so I just never what? watched it again wild for a show to make that big of a f- switch from good to bad well it's not unheard of with hbo look at fucking yeah. true detective yeah 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 season two of true detective is terrible but see i i started watching like i think i got like three episodes in i didn't hate it yeah it's cl- not as good obviously and i don't know how it ends i should get around to finishing it but like I liked Colin Farrell's character, but that's, I have no clue how it ends. So tough to have an opinion. I was kind of in it for Vince Vaughn. I was liking Vince Vaughn as the villain, which is the thing everyone super hated. So maybe I just can't be trusted, but like, yeah, you get, it makes me wonder is season two of true detective good. If season one doesn't exist because season one of true detective is outstanding television. Yeah. How about season three? Did you ever delve into that? No, but I heard it got good again. I heard three yeah, was good. Got, yeah. That the one with the guy that's going to be Blade? Oh, I don't know about that, but it features the guy who was the bad guy in the Stephen Dorff is, <laughs> is oh, in it. <laughs> that's a fun and, six degrees right? of separation. Good for him to get a fun, like a good role to dig his teeth into, you know, like uh, Steven get some Dorf. prestige television. Yeah. Some motherfuckers <laughs> are always trying to ice skate uphill. Yeah. <laughs> I, for, I I don't know that lead actor's name, but black guy, long first name starts with an M, I think. Yeah, I can't. I can picture him. I can't think of his name. Yeah, yeah. he's as far as I know, he's the new blade. <laughs> Oh, really? They're going to make a movie or a TV show? Movie, as far as I know. Oh, good. That's I I am a, a big enough mark for Blade. I'll watch the third one. Oh, yeah. Blade. Tr- I think Blade Trinity is perfectly fine. Yeah, perfectly fine is the right way. It's not a masterpiece, but it's fun. I think if I were to rank them, I think it goes in order. I think it's one, two, three. Like three is the worst yeah. one, but it's perfectly mm-hmm. fine. There are a lot of people that would say two is the best. I really like two, but I can't yeah, go. Two is great. I can't go as far as saying the best. Like, yeah, man, one has that fucking crystal method, fucking blood disco <laughs> opener. <laughs> that opener goes so hard. And Steven Dorff is so good. Like, yeah. Donald Long, or how do you pronounce that guy's last name? He's like his flunky that lo- loses his arm. Yeah. That's good comedic relief. Yeah. Two is very good. Ron, no, you yeah. can't argue with Ron Perlman. Fucking Guillermo del Toro made that movie. Like, that's a good yeah. movie. Yeah. But it's, boy, it's tough to, it's yeah. just tough to get past the, the, the vibe of one yeah what and one was so ahead of it's like there had been so few good superhero movies to that point it's like look at this yeah like, well first off most of us didn't even realize it was, if you weren't a comic nerd you didn't realize it was a comic book right you just thought oh a fun vampire movie chris christopherson's yeah. here why wouldn't he be yeah, I remember like owning some, bought it from the twenty five cent discount rack, like ho- like Marvel horror comics, like a Morbius or something, <laughs> and they just featured Blade. So that's, that's how I knew him. Oh, okay. Like, oh, he's not even good enough to get a comic, and he gets a fucking movie. Like that's interesting. 
that first one i think the main reason i like it it is just the vibe it's that like it's that fucking trench coat and techno vibe you know yeah. like <laughs> it is it is crystal method and sunglasses indoors like man am i here <laughs> for it yeah <laughs> So they end up taking the defective Homer droid to get repaired at like wherever like the in that facility where they fix shit because it's oh it's inside the tire fire yeah that's where they, that's where uh, their like, behind the yeah. scenes lair yeah. is <laughs> and while on the repair table uh, he has like a an iPad that he can like adjust his stats kind of <laughs> yeah. And he makes himself accidentally makes himself self-aware. Uh, they go to wipe his brain when they see that he's done this, knowing that his programming won't allow him to harm a human. But he accidentally murders them anyway. Yeah, just like backs up into a into a platter full of knives and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like knives and scalpels and syringes. Yeah. yeah, and they go flying across the room and yeah. murk these two scientists. <laughs> So now he's on the loose. He is self-aware. He knows that he's a robot. Uh, he find he, down there in the in the guts of this facility. He finds a Lisa android. Tells her the truth, but she can't comprehend it until Homer turns up her self-awareness. Uh, now they wake. They kind of team up to wake up the rest of the family. Uh, so they're now the the entire family is aware of their situation. Uh, they their plan is to escape Simpsons World, which I'm sure that's a part of the show. Some of them become self-aware, I'm assuming. I think there's one, if I'm remembering right. Again, watched it when it was new and didn't understand it. So <laughs> I am not a reliable narrator. God, they're, when they are escaping the the Simpsons world, when they get outside, like they're on the streets, there are so many good pause and look around because there's so many random characters. There's that a Matt American gladiators guy in the ball. Was that the guy that like Milhouse's mom was dating for a while? Yep. The one that was dating Luann. I for, yeah. I don't remember if we, I don't remember if they gave him a name or if it was yeah. just one of the American gladiators. Yeah. <laughs> you see, you see that earlier when they're taking the broken Homer to the tire fire to get him fixed. Like as they're driving down that street, there's grandpa yelling at a cloud and there's yeah. uh, the kids in their army helmets with, uh, with Nelson in the wagon tied up, taking oh, him God, away. Yeah. And like, yeah. there's like that whole street is nothing but like Simpsons references. Yeah. There's this lot of nice touches in this one. Yeah. And uh, while they're trying to escape, Homer is ambushed by two drunk Australians who they're they're up next to the hedge from like the whole the classic Homer disappearing into the bush yeah. meme. So they're like pushing him in and he doesn't want to be a part of it. And Bart is witnessing all this and he kind of gets fed up. So he takes that iPad and uh, turns off Homer's safety features and he promptly kills those Australians. <laughs> pushes them into the hedge and they disappear yeah. into the hedge and then blood just comes yeah. out from underneath the hedge. What is in the hedge? What's happening in there? I love that as they're shoving him in the hedge, they're shouting meme, 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 meme. Yeah. That's so funny. What a thing to chant. And Simpsons world somehow senses that like some of the droids are going out of control. So they, they go into like lockdown, mm -hmm. like ev everyone's rushed out of there and they have sent out a swarm of security drones, which are all Ralphie droids, which is so such good. a nice touch. Uh, they, they do their best. They, they kill off countless Ralphies as well, Did you see in, amongst the carnage, Ned's original wife shows up again and she gets cheesed. Maude is there cause Homer's Homer's shooting the Ralphie droids with a t-shirt cannon. And oh, like, yeah. one of them like bounces off one of the Ralphies and shoots Maude. Who, yeah, who nice touch it. again. And yeah. then also in that same scene, 
Lisa is using the is using Homer's makeup shotgun from the episode <laughs> with his brother where he's like yeah. trying to come up with an invention and it's that fucking make, makeup gun. <laughs> there were so many good deep cut Simpson references yeah. in this. This I bet this was fun to make. Yeah. Oh my god, can you imagine? Uh, but eventually they run out of different kinds of weapons to fight off the seemingly endless horde of Ralphies. And just when things look lost, Marge comes out of nowhere driving the goddamn Canyon Arrow. Hell yeah, she does. Such a perfect time to break out that random Simpsons reference. With the music <laughs> stinger. Yeah. Hank Williams Jr. singing the theme. He's in the credits of this episode. Yeah. Really? <laughs> 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 so they drive off destroying uh, thousands of Ralphies. <laughs> Ralphies are getting crushed all around us. Yeah. And they eventually burst through the side of the dome that contains Simpsons World. So they did it. So like they drive for hours and eventually pull over on some little roadside diner, which only seems to exist in movies. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, where do those have, people live? We'd have seen them by now. Yeah. We'd have seen <laughs> these kind of fucking midnight yeah. roadside diners with all the driving yeah, they we wouldn't, do. And if they existed, they'd be open for breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be open till four a.m. Like, no, they'd be off for no. sure. It's, <laughs> it's bullshit, is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I want treats late at night. <laughs> yeah, I want an omelet at eleven thirty p.m. <laughs> But no, we got to eat fucking Twizzlers for dinner out on the road. <laughs> uh, so they are sitting in the diner, kind of like quietly contemplating what their future holds. Uh, turns out that this diner is ran by the Belcher family from Bob's Burgers. I was like, huh, wonder where this is going to go. That's when the camera pulls back and we see that they are inside a giant world dedicated to Bob's Burgers. And it just keeps Padding back, and there's all these other giant domes. There's like a South Park world, yeah. a Family Guy world, Futurama, fucking Big Mouth was featured. Yeah, Rick and Morty. Yeah, and uh, then I think if you look, there's a SpongeBob. Yep, the SpongeBob pineapple is the other one. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, oh, this whole world is just theme parks. They just drove to yeah. another one. Yeah, so I was. I thought that too was a nice touch. I recognized like right away when they were in the diner. I recognized that's Bob's you? Burgers. They're in Bob's yeah. Burgers, and then yeah, I did. It, it cuts to Linda Belcher. Yeah, I've seen plenty of the episodes of that show, but I, I was, I was not catching that at all. And then to to like, uh, the. the Every episode of Bob's Burgers has the the burger of the day, and it's always a pun. the The burger of the day that was there is uh, the trio of teriyaki burger. <laughs> that's fun. Bob's Burgers is fucking good. Yeah, I like yeah, that show. And consistently good. Yeah, consistently, consistently funny. Very funny show. Yeah. I definitely laugh out out loud more to a Bob's Burgers episode than a modern Simpsons episode. We did it. We did. Holy shit, Nathan. We made it. <laughs> we, we said we couldn't. What an Where episode. Where are the haters at now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was, we, uh, we really put on a fucking show for him this week, buddy. Yeah. We did exhausted, but yet we forced our bodies to do what they didn't want to do. For I you. really liked both of these episodes. I yeah, think, damn I th right. I think the it parody was very, was really good, and I think the treehouse was so far above average. I think the treehouse, mm -hmm. I think it was three for three. They were all super fucking yep. good. And you know me, I'll turn my nose up at a treehouse pretty easily, but I was I was. All three of these were, like you said, above average. Yeah, the 
the Westworld one gave opportunity, you know, for dropping so many references. That's a mm-hmm. super meta episode. Like when when he finds Lisa and moves her self aware slider all the way up, and she starts like having a mental breakdown. Yeah. Like, oh god, yeah, what I am forgot. I? Yeah. And he just grabs it on the <laughs> iPad and slides it back just a smidge yeah. to get yeah. her to mellow out. <laughs> uh, that was very good. Even having not seen the baba duke uh i did i liked the puka duke one a lot yeah it had some scares which was good we yeah. needed some scares and i have some manner of rev, rev uh, of of revenants what's the <laughs> I, I lost the word <laughs> words are hard i like death note so uh, uh so uh that a, reverence yes thank you Oof. Mm, fucking <laughs> stroke out i've had too much halloween candy uh, i like death note to, so to see it like that feels like to me like something sort of niche or something pretty niche that i sort of like getting on yeah. the simpsons is like a cool thing to see and uh th- yeah. the the I'm sure it took a lot of fucking work to make the Simpsons look like that. So yeah, I thought. Oh that my was god, cool. good point. Yeah, yeah, good, uh, good week all around. God damn it, we, they did it and we did it. Can you imagine? Yeah, <laughs> they thought? finally rose to our level. Yes, it's about time. <laughs> the Simpsons. <laughs> Yeah, we'll uh, we'll do it again next week. How about that? Uh, Why not? We'll do episodes uh, seven and eight. Does that sound right? Yep. Those those that math adds up. Episodes seven and eight of season thirty four of The Simpsons for next week. Uh, I I bought a bunch of Halloween candy, and as we record this, it's the twenty eighth, so it just has to survive three days. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't buy it over Labor Day weekend like I did last year and then eat it all. <laughs> yeah, got a couple of Jesus take the wheel moments in the next couple of days. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm pretty, I'm, I don't mean to pat myself on the back, but like I dumped the bags into a big bowl and left it on the counter in the kitchen. And I bet I've only had like two pieces. Look at you go. New year, new Marlin. Yeah. I mean, it's October. It's not a new yeah. year. But, <laughs> like, like, I'm not just standing in the kitchen with no pants on, shoveling it yeah. down my face. Yeah. <laughs> Finally discover you don't even need to chew Kit Kats. <laughs> you just swallow hard. It'll go down. You can just slide them. Just break them and slide them. Put, put them down your fucking throat like batteries into a flashlight. I did buy, I, I got Kit Kats and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Those are my. Solid. That's what I'm giving out. No one can complain. I didn't skimp at all. Yeah. I got, uh, I looked at them. I looked at the big bags that's mostly fucking Hubba Bubba and Whoppers. I looked at those bags. <laughs> get real bold yeah i i thought do i want to save some money and give out fucking parade candy to these poor little kids (laughs) nah get them the good stuff so i liked as a kid i liked a weird mix of shit i i i I wouldn't judge the people that were giving you the odd the good and plenties and shit like that I'm with you. I liked the oddball stuff because who wants just a big bucket of Snickerses when they get yeah. home, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but there's something about like, oh, this tiny cardboard box with two Whoppers in it. Who wants <laughs> <Yeah>. this? <laughs> oh, good. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> like the tiny cardboard box with two dots in it that I'm on board for. <laughs> <laughs> but so i didn't like that shit but i always thought it was cool to get ah look at this oh, this look is at this different. a fun size almond joy huh Who's... <laughs> they probably went to canada for <laughs> this <laughs> where'd this even come from <laughs> my thing was i was an only child so it's not like i had people to trade my garbage away to you know yeah <laughs> you didn't have a younger sibling you could dupe <laughs> right Here's all my whoppers. Give me all your 
three musketeers is <laughs> like <laughs> i couldn't uh i had nobody to make those trades with i just you had, had to, to eat make my, do with it i just yeah. had to eat my whoppers <laughs> like a big boy <laughs> <laughs> what a, a man has to just eat his whoppers <laughs> That's, That's like right. a piece of sage old pioneer's yeah. wisdom. <laughs> Sometimes you got to eat your whoppers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do episodes seven and eight next week. You uh, big plans? You Halloweenin? Are you Halloweenin? Uh, no, I don't have any plans yet. It's it's going to be a pretty busy weekend for your boys. So I think I'm probably going to take it pretty easy. Do you... Uh, did you buy candy? You got a house. You got to buy candy. It's on Tuesday. Mm, yeah. You know, last year someone did. If no one does, I better buy some candy too. So probably will. I bet if nothing else, that's what I'll do. I'll just stick around here for a couple hours and see if any kids show up. And as soon as the sun sets, the fucking light turns off because I don't. I don't need assault on precinct 13 happening in my, in my front yard. <laughs> you leave the light on and that, you think that's like a, 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 a signal for ne'er-do-wells to barge yeah. into your home and hold you at gunpoint? Yeah. You got to turn that light off. You can't be the last house with the light on. That's how they sense weakness. <laughs> the children, they want, they want, they got your treats. Now they want more. <laughs> Are you writing a horror film? <laughs> but no, that's that is common knowledge amongst for Halloween. If you turn your light off, you don't go to that door. Well, yeah, but the idea that if you leave it on, you're going to get home yeah. invader <laughs> yeah. is new to me. I mean, I think you need to take a good look at the neighborhood I live in as well. <laughs> I don't think I don't think this is too science fiction. Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's r- ripped from the pages of the headlines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not super far fetched. <laughs> yeah. Could be an episode of Law and Order. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, I never thought of that, but yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Head on a swivel during Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> Have a bat by, uh, yeah. put the bat by the door. S- setting up claymores by the door. <laughs> Nathan, let me tell you about the, uh, the joys of firearm ownership. Yeah. <laughs> the claymores only take out the first wave. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well good luck setting up your halloween claymores yeah god willing it goes okay stuffing ieds into fucking (laughs) jack-o-lanterns eyes feverishly looking up at the 14 camera screens i have set up (laughs) you've got a whole cabin in the woods set up (laughs) <laughs> the breaching the northeast corridor <laughs> you let one in just to toy with them yeah <laughs> show what happens <laughs> sick the drones on them <laughs> <laughs> i like to just cut a foot off and let him tell his friends <laughs> let the whales be a warning for everyone else <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to sit in my garage. I'm going to sit in my garage with a big old bowl of candy and some cold beers for anybody who wants one and come on by. Yeah. Come linger in my garage. Yeah. I don't like to meet. I, I'm <laughs> nervous and weird around new people, but I feel like I should meet the neighbors. So yeah, just have be sitting on a chair that's just out of the light of the garage you're kind of in the shadows they have to go into the shadows to greet you (laughs) (laughs) close the garage door behind them yeah (laughs) don't want to let in a draft hello new friend (laughs) just (laughs) dragging a beer pong table out (laughs) (laughs) you want to throw bags do you play bags it's fucking cold out there's snow on the ground i gotta i'm with an 18 month old and a four-year-old we gotta get going (laughs) (laughs) a couple games wouldn't hurt wouldn't hurt you (laughs) oh Oh, just overly friendly and overly pushy and weird like the kids in funny games yeah. <laughs> uh, dressed all in white. Yeah. Nice polo tucked in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 
God damn it, I hope it doesn't come to that. But you know what? It's your property. It's your choice. Yep, damn straight. I will <laughs> stand my ground. <laughs> <laughs> all right well seven and eight are the episodes for next week uh find us online on the internet google america's barley basket um and uh, do, leave us reviews uh, please we, like we started off with that real nice one and thanks again to that angel person who left us that review back in june i am so happy to know that the person who likes both halves of the podcast exists <laughs> i wasn't sure <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.